profession. I love crappy romantic comedies. Yeah, yeah, it's a cliché. I can't help it. I love them. All those movies have that scene, you know? The girl is at her wit's end. She's been crying her eyes out. Her makeup is running. She looks like a zombie. She's done. Which is when Ryan Gosling knocks on her door to coax her out. Miss. Ah, shit. That sounds nothing like Ryan Gosling. See, this is the problem with my life in a nutshell. It's not romantic, and it's certainly not a comedy. All right, where am I? What happened? I felt woozy, and then oof, really, really hot, and I guess that I fainted. And that's putting it mildly. I'll be all right, though. Are you sure? Ah, uh, as if I could be sure of anything. Still, I should probably update my guardian angel. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe there's something I know for sure. If I have to spend one more second lying on this filthy floor... I'm pretty sure that I'm going to vomit. Uh, vomit again, I guess. Yes, I'm sure. I'm good. I just had a little bit of a moment. A big moment. But it's over now. Uh, sorry, I ducked out. Uh, I'm already feeling much, much better. I can hardly tell her the truth, can I? Most people don't actually want you to be honest with them. Oh, I apologize, Dr. Giagana. I just vomited up my breakfast. I had it all over my chin. It wasn't a good look. It's hardly my fault. I haven't been handling stress very well lately. Come to think of it, isn't it her fault? She just had to go and tell me that my mom's in intensive care. I'm sure, I mean, that is her job. But I gotta tell you, that's a lousy job. Really, really lousy. I'll be out in just a second. Those weren't here before. Do you think they have any idea where they are? I'm sure this comes as a shock, but it is crucial that you understand the situation. Your mom had a brain aneurysm. Do you know what that means? Mom. Funny. I could never get myself to call her mom. She's always been married to me. As I understand it, it's a weakened artery wall? Correct. And that artery ruptured which caused a hemorrhage. It is a serious situation. We need to prepare for whatever happens next very quickly indeed. I've watched enough Grey's Anatomy to know that this is not good. Serious? I, uh, what can I do? Anything related to medical care will be my team's responsibility. But you are her trusted advocate. I I'm so sorry, you should be her what now? Do, do you not remember? This is the reason we called you. We have your name and your number, which means that you signed the release. I have no idea what she's talking about. And since she is not able to express her will, it falls to you to speak on her behalf. But I presume you discussed that when you went through the process. So you must know that there are a number of options to consider. I don't believe it! She put my name on the form without asking me. She must have forged my signature. It's hardly a surprise. She's always done that kind of stuff. But I'm not making any important decisions. A phone call from the hospital, that was a surprise. I'd never have thought anything so serious would happen to her. Anyway, when she's back on her feet, she's going to have a good laugh about this. <laughs> the idea of me deciding on her behalf. Although, that's just a figure of speech, huh? I can't remember the last time I saw Marie laugh. <laughs> Actually, I do. When she read my first screenplay in high school. The passion with which she disregarded my work was always amazing to me. <laughs> she almost died laughing that day. <laughs> and the saddest part... She was right. It totally sucked. I'm sorry, miss. Miss Fortin. Demange. I... 
Uh, I went back to my maiden name. I'm sorry, that wasn't in your file. Listen, I understand that this is all very sudden, but we don't have a lot of time. We need to focus. We do indeed. Why do you think I'm here? Let me be clear, miss. I'm not your enemy, I'm just the uncle physician. So we can work together to help your mother, or we can wait 7 hours, 22 minutes and 17 seconds. And then I can go home and you can pick up the conversation with Dr. Zorzan instead. But I should warn you, Zorzan is an old coot. No, you're right. I'm sorry. Okay. I guess I deserve that one. It's okay. I understand. It's not an easy situation. Our major concern right now is the hemorrhage is spreading. There's the risk of a cerebral vasospasm. That is a complication which could severely affect her brain. Is... is she going to die? We're doing our best to make sure that doesn't happen. But there could be long-term consequences. This sort of event severely impacts the body, and mental functions may also be impaired. I need to know if you and your mother will be able to deal with that sort of complication. No, it can't be! I'm not ready for this. Holy... Fucking... Shit. What do you mean? To be completely frank, if we're able to pull your mother through this, there's only a small chance she'll be like she was before. Small? How small? Smaller than that. In all probability, she will never be quite the same. Some people would prefer not to keep living under such circumstances. That rather their medical care were geared more around letting go as gracefully as possible. What I need to know is, what would your mother want? I don't know how to answer that. Last time she told me she wanted something, it was... To be in MoMA. Excuse me? MoMA? The museum in New York. Miss de Mange, I... Wait, your mother's that Marie de Mange? The artist? Ah, there it is. Works every time. Once people figure out who Marie is... Snap! Their whole demeanor changes. They feel like they know her somehow. Of course, they're completely wrong. Oh, she takes them in with her dog and pony show. But there's a world of difference between who she is in public and in private. And if this doctor knew Marie, the real her, she would realize how ridiculous her question is. Yeah, the Marie de Mange. And I'm her assistant, I guess. I handle the business, the management, the press. So that she can be fully dedicated to her art, you see? Anyway, uh, the other day, I, I got a call from Centre Pompidou. They want to do a retrospective on her life and work. Can you imagine? The, the billboards, the crowds, the press, the whole shebang. And I'm like, hell yeah. I hop into my car, I rush over to tell her, I run into the workshop, yelling. And you know what she said? Uh, did you hear from Mama? Ugh. Someone had told her they were considering her self-portrait eight, a canvas from her latest series. A whole exhibit in Paris, on the other hand, she didn't care. So, that's my mother. Most of the time, I don't know. I have no idea what she wants. I know what I'm asking isn't easy. I can give you a little time to think. Like that would change anything. I, uh, yeah. I suppose I need to think about it. I'm sorry, I... I gotta go. <sighs> I know what she'd say. That I'm running away again. What did she expect? That I'd just show up and what? 
Decide whether uh, oh, she lives or she dies. <laughs> I'm supposed to make it to the end of the day, let alone... I remember, Diane and I found an injured bird in the backyard. It was tiny. I think it was around the time Marie had set up her new studio in the sunroom. Now that I think of it, that was also my first experience with death. In fact, I also had a really weird dream that night. Something about that day always seemed off. I never figured out why. And why am I thinking about this now? Do you recognize it? This is the mobile that Marie made me before I was born. It's exquisite and delicate. I loved it. And you did too. I think I still have it in a box somewhere. Marie told us she'd take care of the bird, so we went back to playing. I never saw it again, and when I asked what happened, she said it just flew away. I was so relieved. Back then, Marie wasn't very well known, but she was hard working. She had just started a series on birds, actually. They were all over the house. She considered them a symbol. A postmodern symbol of anti-anthropic levity. <laughs> Classic Marie. I think I saw a big shadow moving down the hallway that night. I imagined a monster bird was visiting us. For a long time, I thought it was just a strange dream. The nest was high up in the tree, but the wind blew it down. The bird was obviously young. It it was a big fall. It must have been badly hurt. I didn't realize it at the time. Ha, <laughs> yeah, Diane was so proud of packing her own suitcase. Her father came to pick her up that afternoon. She spent the weekend with him and her stepsister. I was a bit jealous, but also happy to have some time with my mother, just us. Now, I know for certain that someone was in the backyard that night. And since Diane was at her father's, it must have been Marie. What was she doing out there? Maybe... Marie? 
Marie was always quite passionate about birds. So I suggested we keep this one as a pet once it got better. I could already imagine it. A beautiful cage tucked in the corner of the studio. She got so mad. At the time, I didn't understand why she reacted like that. But now... Maybe Marie killed the bird. That's what she was doing out there in the middle of the night, burying it in secret. And it might sound strange, but I also understand why she did it. astonishing person, you know? She's usually hard, but also she could be vulnerable sometimes. She couldn't stand seeing the bird injured. She knew it would never recover. It was too weak. I remember she said, not being able to fly, that's no life for a bird. She thought it would be better off dead. She could have just abandoned it, let things run their course. But I don't think she did. I think she killed it with her own hands. It sounds cruel, doesn't it? <laughs> but that's just Marie. That's her outlook on life. She's all or nothing. What I need to know is, what would your mother want? I'm not ducking out. Not this time. After all, isn't this what Marie wanted? I... I think... My legs are shaking. Maybe I'm having another turn. I think I need a sugary drink. Understood. Do you need anything? Well, I need more coffee. But if I drink another one, my stomach is going to declare war on the rest of me. I... I just can't speak on my mom's behalf. One thing's for sure, she's a radical. She's all or nothing, all the time. I understand. It's hard to contemplate the idea of living with a disability. It's not that, not at all. If we were talking about me or, or, or someone else, I would say, it's gonna be fine. You adapt, people do it all the time. They have to. Life's too important. I would say that. She wouldn't. I'm not sure that answers your question. She certainly comes across as rather f forthright. You don't say. I've seen her on TV a couple of times. My father loves her. She's an extraordinary artist. In her interviews, she's so impressive, fierce even. It must be quite something to be the, the, the daughter of someone so talented. I've heard this one before. That's a polite way to say, it can't be easy to have a nutcase for a mother. You get used to it. <laughs> Doctor, I... Do we know why? Why this happened? We were just having dinner last night. She was... She was fine. She... There could be a lot of factors. Family history, hypertension, alcohol consumption. I did have a pretty severe hangover this morning. Even past trauma, like a historic head injury. It's hard to say it right now. Ah. All right, Miss Demange, I'll give you time to think. Let's speak again in about two hours, if that works for you. Uh, sounds good. Um, can I see her? Yes, of course. Let me find out her room number. I know what I have to do, what I should do. It wasn't that long ago that I could write this kind of scene without breaking a sweat. 
I step into the room. There'll be tubes everywhere, beeping sounds. The audience will know that it's serious. Then I start bawling my eyes out. I collapse on my mom's bed, pouring out snot from my nose. Or maybe I'll be dignified, stony-faced, standing quietly in the corner, close up on my face. They'll see I'm suffering deep inside. A single tear rolls down my cheek. That's exactly how it will happen. Or what should happen. There's just one problem. I really must. She probably needs me. I don't know why, but I can't open that door. It's always stressful to share an elevator with a stranger. Still, it could be worse. Hey, Jun. I could have to share it with my sister. Okay, I'm kidding. We love each other. Love giving each other a hard time. Okay, I love giving her a hard time. <laughs> For instance. Hey, Dididou! Nothing? I haven't eaten yet. My, my blood sugar's low, okay? Come with me to the cafeteria. Okay. But if you utter that stupid nickname one more time, I'll strangle you. There it is. She had me worried for a sec. Mm, this food looks nasty. Did you notice? Jan loves being in charge. She wasn't always like that. It started when she was a teenager. Some people get acne, she got authority. So, how's work? Ah, oh, you know, uh, scheduling, phone calls, spreadsheets. It's mind-numbing. There's no time to think. That's why I love it so much. How's your script coming along? Oh, uh... I never should have told her about it. I guess I had a moment of weakness. I thought she would worry less about me if she knew I was working on something creative. But why did I even think she was worrying about it in the first place? She doesn't seem worried now. Better change the subject. And how are you? Well, since you ask... <sighs> so easy. I was doing good, until yesterday. <laughs> One of my idiot patients up and groped my ass. She's a physical therapist, working with professional athletes. She spends her days massaging pretty boys with two brain cells and zero self-control. She's the best in her field, I've heard. All the major soccer clubs are fighting over her. Probably because she has her own story. She almost became a tennis pro at 17 years old. She was really strong. And then there was some pff, kerfuffle, I don't know what happened, but the league didn't have her back, so she just gave it all up. I've never seen her so angry. Though today's a close second. I wonder what happened to that guy who was stupid enough to grope her. What happened? I handled it with poise, aplomb, and composure. Anyway, he has a broken hand now. Good thing he plays soccer, not volleyball. The worst part is, she's not joking. In other news, this place is so stressful. Everyone's way too nice. It is a hospital, Jan. I know. They should be scowling 24-7. So? How is she? Um... I haven't been to see her yet. What are you waiting for? A singing telegram? Sorry, that was uncalled for. This whole situation, it's just... a lot. Yeah? Sounds like there's something else. Something else bothering you? No, nothing else. Wanna bet that there's something else? Well, I guess, um... I did meet with the doctor this morning. She told me about your deal. 
between mom and you. And to be honest, I was shocked. Were you going to tell me at some point? Ugh, see? I knew that this whole trusted advocate thing would never fly. The only question is, will she believe me when I tell her I didn't know? Given the state she's in, I wouldn't bet on it. Are you bitter right now? <laughs> certainly not. Uh, certainly. No. I mean... You are bitter. You're, you're pouting. Look at your fucking face. Enough, okay? Stop it. This isn't the time. I just don't get it. What is there to get? You know Marie. She's unpredictable. Wait, you mean you didn't know? Well, you should see what my signature looks like on the form. Oh, she's the worst. Why would she do that? I have no idea. I guess she thought it made sense since I handled the rest of her paperwork. Unless she thought I was a perfect fit since I'm a Libra with Pisces rising or whatever. All right, but still, it's a big responsibility. And it's a bit weird to ask you, of all people, to make that decision. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Scream in the middle of the hospital cafeteria? That's not my style. Although, the way this day is going, it might become my style. You can be pretty clumsy. You can't cook a meal without setting the house on fire. Et voilà. I'm never going to live that down, am I? Depends. Have you figured out a safe way to brown baked Alaska yet? Whatever. This isn't the time to rehash all that. Really, I don't get it. This is so important. Why would she trust you over me? All right, I've had enough. You know what? You're right. Only an idiot would trust me. Ah, oh, come on! Yeah, here it comes. You're the reliable one, aren't you? The one people can always count on. What are you talking about? Ugh, I'm out of here. I'd probably just trip over her ventilator or something. Wouldn't want that to happen now, would we? Uh, you're being ridiculous, you know. Please, sit down. I didn't mean to upset you. Oh, you didn't? Well, you got that wrong. Ugh. Well, that was embarrassing, wasn't it? Ugh, I just can't help it. So mom wrote my name instead of hers on a worthless paper. What does it matter? Dan and I are stuck in this stupid competition. I hate it. I feel I can't escape it. Oh, what? Ah, uh, of course I'd remember that day. My infamous 25th birthday. The day we met Jan's girlfriend. The day we danced a little, ate a little, and drank too much. But most of all, the day everyone went home early because... I set the kitchen on fire while making dessert. There's plenty about that night I never told Diane. I wasn't expecting Marie to have a present for me, and yet she remembered. I'll be honest, I was super happy. But as usual with Marie, things couldn't just be nice. Ah, I hope you like it because it costs me a fortune. That's what she said when she handed me the bottle. She could afford it too. She wasn't world famous yet, but her career was taking off. And with that, 
Her taste became more and more luxurious. Me? Oh, I was light years away from all of that. I hate whiskey. I hated it then, I hate it now. That's how it works with Marie. Even when she does something for Jan and I, in the end, it's always about her. It was the first time Jan introduced us to her girlfriend. Her very first girlfriend. She didn't make a big deal of it. She didn't even tell me that she would have a guest. But I knew it was important to her. And neither Marie nor myself reacted appropriately. She rushed over to hug them both. I don't think I'd ever seen my mother so excited. Then she congratulated Diane for her rejection of patriarchally mandated heteronormativity. Diane didn't say anything. But I could see she was upset. Her intimacy had just been reduced to activism, somehow. And I wasn't there to support her. I was furious. It's stupid, I know, but I wanted to enjoy my party. And she showed up with something important to share. All of a sudden, my 25th birthday seemed trite and important. Her girlfriend was called Sasha. She was nice, intuitive, smart, and very pretty. I was quite reluctant to organize this party. It was the last birthday I would celebrate at Marie's. Your dad and I were about to move in together. So I wanted to make it special, to impress my mother, earn her respect, maybe even her admiration. But that would only happen if everything were perfect. The fire made it a complete failure. But to be honest, she'd have found some problem anyway. Jan always loved being the center of attention. But when she showed up with her hair cut short and dyed green, I almost didn't recognize her. 19 years strong on this earth and she couldn't care less about people's opinions. She was amazing to me. But I wonder if she was, at least unconsciously, trying to please Marie. It worked, by the way. Marie always had a soft spot for the rebels. And contempt for the rest. I don't think it made Jan any happier, though. I was so stressed out that night that I started drinking early. Marie loves to drink, so does Jan. And her girlfriend, Sasha, followed along. Long story short, we got drunk fast. All four of us. We had booze, we had cigarettes, plus the other stuff. I don't have to tell you everything. And after a while, Jan was completely out. She could barely stand. When dinner started, Marie turned on the charm. She laughed loudly, talked a lot, asked all kinds of questions. She has the most unbelievable charisma when she's trying to please someone, you know? And that night, she really was trying. I thought it was odd. She certainly wasn't doing it for me, or for Diane. And then I noticed the way she was looking at Sasha. I saw the glimmer in her eyes. The same as when she talks about Japanese whiskey. And I got worried. Alex called several times that night. He wanted to know how things were going. He had a hunch things would be tense, and he wanted to be my emotional hotline. I didn't answer. I wanted to fend for myself. <laughs> it's why I didn't invite him in the first place. I'll admit, sometimes his support was stifling. I'd got these nice candles to decorate the table with. Obviously, I burned myself when lighting them. To no one's surprise, that was typical me. Scavus, they called me. It means clumsy in Latin. Marie coined that one. I didn't mind. Quite the contrary, 
In any family, everyone plays a role. You just need to find the one that suits you. And I like being the bumbling, fumbling one. <laughs> that way, at least, the pressure was off. So, yes, Jen and I were trapped in this ridiculous rivalry. The choir girl versus the rebel. The meek versus the indomitable. I'm never taken seriously. She's not allowed to show any sign of weakness, and we hold it against each other. But as soon as we lower our guard, we are saddled with the obvious. It's become more intense as we grew in Mary's shadow. We care about each other more than anyone else. The flames went up very high, very quickly. Everyone ran into the kitchen. Marie, Diane, and Sasha. Oh, she screamed at me. She couldn't believe that anyone could be so inept. I said it was an accident. I was trying to brown the baked Alaska, but it got out of hand. No one questioned my version of events. The whole thing was just classic me. Alex wasn't there to defend me. And I just sucked it up. I never saw Sasha after that day. She and Diane broke up a few weeks later. Maybe I was just drunk. Maybe I was imagining things. Maybe I was paranoid. But when Marie invited Sasha to her studio to see the paintings and more, ooh, that raised the flag. She was up to something. She was trying to seduce her. And maybe she could have. I tried to warn Diane, told her to watch out. She was too far gone. She just looked at me. She had this blissed out smile. She could barely keep her eyes open. I had to do something, but I couldn't face Marie head-on. I wasn't strong enough, so... I improvised. No one noticed the bottle of Japanese whiskey was completely empty. Alcohol burns nicely on the stove. It was perfect for me to craft a diversion. And you know what? I wasn't even that drunk. I was mostly angry. At Marie. At myself. At my inability to confront her face to face. Maybe nothing happened after all. Maybe Marie didn't try anything. I'll never know. But I was scared enough for Diane's relationship that I set the kitchen on fire. I never told Diane what happened. She still thinks I'm a bumbling idiot. I can't tell her the truth, and she wouldn't want to hear it anyway. But what I did that night, I did out of love. Marie always said that you can't trust anyone in life. Well, in that moment, whether she knew it or not, Diane could trust me. She trusts you over me. And here we go again, trying to see who can spit the furthest. But you know what? I'm not playing this game. She needs her sister today, not a fight. You know, I get it. Get what? Why you think of me this way? <laughs> the chump who keeps screwing things up? I never... I understand because that's my little routine, you know? What are you saying? What's wrong with me? I'm not about to tell her all my dirty secrets. That wouldn't be like me at all. Although I 
Guess this is a pretty good day for confessions. Whatever. Just understand this. We both know things can be tense between us. It would be easier if I could act like this is all her fault. Jan's competitive spirit is unmatched. She has to be the first in everything. It can make her a little stupid sometimes. Oh, just like when she was training for tennis. Or when we did hamster races. I felt like punching you at times. Come again? Yeah, it sounds weird when I say it out loud. You're the strongest person I know. <laughs> and you're built like a sea cucumber. <laughs> Look, all I'm saying is... I was always on your side when it mattered. Are you talking about mom right now? Not just her. Yeah, I'm totally talking about Marie. I'm talking about the fact that you're my sister, and that's special to me. And I know it's the same to you. All right, that's enough sappy stuff for one day. Let's talk about something else. Look, I'm sure you're upset. Of course I'm upset. We just found out that Mom might die. Does that mean nothing to you? It does. Uh, of course it does. Uh, but it's okay. I'm handling it. You know, I'm perfectly capable of making this decision. Just leave it to me this time. What's going on, June? I'm sorry? Something's wrong. Uh, could be the grapefruit. I read somewhere that it's really toxic. And, no, uh, it's not the grapefruit. I don't recognize you. You're different. Ooh, she wants to talk. Seriously. That's just her way to cope with stress. She needs to dissect things to understand them. And she needs to understand things in order to control them. So, what's the play? Idiot or goldfish? Maybe if I say nothing, she'll leave me alone? And don't pretend you can't hear me. I guess I can't get out of this one. You're acting like... like some kind of robot. You're all closed off. And you clearly aren't considering how I feel about all this. Uh, what's the game here? Where's the Jen I know? She's got some nerve lecturing me as though nothing happened. I'm not gonna lie, she's not entirely wrong. Come on, quit it, Jan. I guess not thinking enough about you makes me egotistical, huh? In case you hadn't noticed, my life has been rather complicated of late. See? That's exactly the problem. And, okay, this is going to make me sound like, like a huge asshole yet again, but I'm used to that. I've been meaning to talk to you about this, so... So why not do it now? We're here for Mom. And, and you can see how hard this is on me. A and yet, here we are, yet again, talking about you. What happened to you was awful. It really was. Absolutely horrible. But that was five years ago. It can't be five years. It can't be five years. It can't be five years. It was only yesterday. Why the hell is she bringing this up, anyway? <gasps> Where are you going with this? I, I don't really know. I guess I'm a little worried about you. I don't understand what goes on in your head and... And that scares me. Why are you like this? Really? She's worried about me? You had to go there, didn't you? You, you really... you can't help yourself! W whenever you can't control something, you just hate it, don't you? And so POW! You attack! You're wrong, Jun. I'm just trying to help. You, you can't really tell me that everything's fine, can you? Do you think that throwing my little problems back in my face is going to help? Oh, wonderful! Wow! Oh, it's a miracle! I'm cured! Thanks for the therapy session, but I really have to go. Obviously, uh, you can handle everything just fine on your own, so go ahead and take care of Marie. 
Wait, June! Don't leave, please! I'm sorry. I really need you. I... I really am a dumbass. She really is a dumbass.